Let's get more now on the government's free childcare scheme, something that not everyone's happy about. Earlier, I spoke to one nursing school owner who had this message for our next guest. It's not free. The parents are covering the gap. I'm covering the gap and the government's still not listening. And it's just such a shame because it could be rolled out in, in a much different way. One of the biggest concerns is there's, there's no staff to deliver this childcare. I think they're down 55,000 staff places. We have to work in legal ratio um, and the government have made efforts to extend the ratio. However, myself and other providers haven't extended that ratio for two-year-olds because we deem it not safe. Well, listening to that is the Enterprise Minister, Kevin Hollerick. You got the short straw this morning, an Easter Monday bank holiday in <laughs> Westminster for you. Delighted to be here. Or delighted to have you here. The last time we saw each other was in a field in North Yorkshire surrounded by sheep, of course, at the Rydell right. Show. Yes, absolutely. Criticism there of, of 15 hours of free childcare. Will you be able to guarantee every single parent will be able to access this? Well, yeah, this is great. This is £8 billion pounds of, uh, of money committed to this. Hugely important. 15 hours of childcare for parents of two-year-olds. So we expanded our childcare offer. Um, the, uh, that, and that expands over the next year to be, go to 30 hours for any child in nine months or over. So really good news for lots of parents. Um, and I think it's worth about £6,900 £6, to a typical household. So a loss of money. It's really good for those households in terms of their ability to go out and earn more money and get some help with their childcare. There's a survey in The Telegraph this morning, Ipsos survey, that says 65% of parents of under fives don't even know about this policy. Well, that's, that's great that I'm on here today, telling people about it. And yet the, your but this was announced a year ago by the Prime Minister. Well, well I say, it's, um, certainly people I speak to in my constituency and further afield when I talk to businesses uh, know about it. And it's something that was called for across the board by business organisations, by economists, by citizens. So really good that we can deliver this today. Of course, we want more people to know about it so they can access this childcare. We want more people back, out of, you know, back into the world of work. We know that's good for employers good for the economy, so this is another step down the road of getting those people back into work. The measures that we put in place at the budget this year we should bring around 300,000 people back into the world of work by cutting national insurance and by measures like this. So really, really good news for many working households up and down the country. Labour would dispute this. They've put out a quote this morning. Let's show it to you now, shall we? They say this is a, a pledge without a plan, that there aren't the plans to back this up. They say that... You know, it's a plan that was announced in 2023, threatening to crash the childcare system, just like they say you crash the economy. Well, they would say that, wouldn't they? I mean, but, I mean, the thing is, talking about us not having a plan, it's pretty rich coming from Keir Starmer, who just blows the wind on every, every policy he seems to bring forward. I don't think that's right. I mean, I think Bridget Phillipson, the, uh, the minister last week, education minister last week, wouldn't even commit to what we're doing in terms of childcare, that £6,900 a year. I'd really like to see clarity on, from Labour whether they would follow through on our commitment. We're making that commitment. Are others going to make that commitment? But do you think she doesn't want to commit to that policy when the industry says that there aren't enough staff, that the funding's not there, that it's not workable for them? And they are the experts at the end of the day. Well, there's always a supply and demand issue here. There's a timing issue. First, you provide the supply in terms of the cash and the, the demand side is then fulfilled by the private sector because most nursery places are, perform, are, are delivered by the private sector. We're confident that will be the case. You want to talk about wages today? Yes. Do you want to talk Thank about you. your own wages as well? <laughs> My wages? My, oh, no. You've just got a 5.5% pay rise. OK, well, these things were uh, done independently by, uh, by an independent body. Uh, I didn't even know that, to be honest, but what I'm here to talk about... You didn't know your own pay rise? No, I did not know we were getting a pay rise. Um, but what I'm here to talk about is a much bigger pay rise for 2.7 million people. But it's a much bigger pay rise. 2.7 million people will get uh, a 10% pay rise. Um, so this is on people on national living wage, which means in total about £1,800 a year for somebody who's on full-time national living wage. And in cash terms, that's £10,000 higher than it was in 2010. In real terms, 35% higher after adjusting for inflation. 2.7 million people. Fantastic, fantastic news for many people up and down this country on low pay. I don't think anyone will ever question that, that at all. You obviously are the Enterprise Minister. You will know, though, that this is a government policy. This is then brought about by businesses. Yes, Are absolutely. businesses in a position to be able to afford this? Uh, and, and there's no doubt this is tough. It's, it's striking a balance between what businesses can afford to pay 
and, and in terms of what need, people need to earn. So I pay tribute to any business around the country, particularly in certain sectors which are really struggling right now, such as hospitality. That's why we said this will be the last big increase we've seen for the next year. We, we see in the future we're going to maintain this target we had of, of two-thirds of medium wage. So future in increases should be, rather than being a pound and two pence, as this one is an hour, probably more like 50p, I would guess, depending on where inflation is and average wages are. But, but it is tough for businesses, and we should thank them for what they do, because they do carry the, the shoulder the largest burden here. Meanwhile... There are lots of other costs going up. First of April, council taxes. We're seeing sewage rates going up, water rates going up, bills going up across the board. What more can you do to help people? Well, that's why I need to get on top of inflation. If you cast your mind back a little over a year ago, inflation was running at 11.1%. Today, it's about 3.5%. And by the end of this year, it'll be 2%. And that's, that's, the, that's our target, Bank of England's target. And that was we got there a year early. So really good, good policy making. And in terms of international issues as well, of course, energy prices dropping, all those things are going to help people in terms of those kind of price increases. Inflation is the number one thing we've got to tackle. We're also seeing the economy growing now, of course. We're seeing taxes dropping, about £900 for the average worker. We'll hopefully see interest rates dropping later this year. So there'll be lots of good news coming through in the economy over the course of this year. And the, the number one thing we can do, get inflation under control, which we have done, and, but also get the economy growing. That's good for people. It's not just about, it's not just about average uh, your earnings. Sure. It's about being able to find a job. And there are 4.2 million people, more people in work today than there were in 2010. A job's a miracle. Shh. Meanwhile, we need to talk about the NHS. Front page of many of the papers today, Royal College of Emergency Medicine saying that in England, every week, more than 250 people are dying needlessly because they can't get out of A&E and they can't get into a hospital bed. Yeah, you've seen huge demand-side pressures. Admissions, uh, attendances and admissions at A&E are about 8% year-on-year. Huge demand in the system. We're putting extra resources in. There are 5,000 more critical care beds. 110,000 more doctors and nurses working every day in the NHS than there were since 2010. But there are huge demand side pressures. It's the same in England, uh, which we run, but also in Labour and Wales, exactly the same thing you see. In fact, our stats are a little bit better than Wales. So this, it's not easy to get on top of because of the demand side. But that is scant crumb of comfort for somebody whose family are now mourning the loss of someone who needlessly died. Of course, that's why you put more resources in the NHS, which is what we're doing. 168 billion pounds a year, 13 13% real terms increase after inflation increase over the last five years. We're putting the extra resources in, but there are huge demand side pressures. We also need to, to end these strikes that are causing some of the problems too. There's no doubt over the last year, NHS has been affected in terms of some of the waiting times around those strikes. We need to get past that make sure the service is, is firing on all, all cylinders so people can get the care they need. You need to do more, you need to put more into the system. You've been in power for 14 years, Minister. Well, we are putting more and more in the system. I say... Well, it's not enough, and, surely. Well, uh, and the, uh, you're absolutely right. Demographics mean there's more and more demands on the system. But, you know, that, that huge increase, real terms increase, 110,000 more doctors and nurses work in the NHS in England every single day. Than in 2010. Those resources are going in, but demographics mean this is tough. It's not just tough in England, but also Wales and Scotland and across the continent and other parts of the world. Demographics do make life difficult in providing healthcare and social care in our system. One of Rishi Sunak's five key pledges was to reduce waiting lists in the NHS. Cancer waiting lists are at an all-time high. They've risen for 11 consecutive years. One of the other things he's pledged to do is to stop the boats. That's, That's right. That's not happening, is it? Well, we saw a 36% decrease last year. We saw a record against... number of people arriving the first three months this year. Yeah, there's, there's uh, numbers coming into the, in the UK, there's no doubt about it. We should judge that situation at the year end, though. We saw, we saw a 36% decrease last year against a backdrop of 16% increase across Europe. So we are making, uh, we are making progress here. And, but the key thing is to make sure we get our legislation in the right place. That's what the Rwanda bill is all about. Every turn we are frustrated. Uh, Labour have voted against that plan 118 times, our plans on immigration. But we will get on top of it. We need the support of Parliament and the support of our courts to make sure we can do that. But we have got a plan. Labour have no plan how to deal with this. Very quickly, the Sunday Times this morning reporting that there will only be 98... Conservative MPs at the next general election. They're quoting a poll of 15,000 people. Will you be one of them? I don't know. That's up to my constituents. I very much hope to be. Um, 
And there's a lot of water to flow on the bridge yet before we get to an election. That's the point. And as I said before, the economic good news we are seeing, taxes dropping, wages increasing, interest rates dropping, the economy is growing again. So all those things are good. And I think people will feel better about life. And, the, and that poll didn't, didn't actually take into account lots of undecided people. So the lots of people are still on the fence uh, and the jury's still out for lots of people. We need to reach out to those people and make sure they feel that some of the incredible achievements we've had since 2010, despite the difficult backdrop of things like COVID and cost of living crisis, so 4 million people, more people in work, 1.2 million fewer people unemployed in this country. So many things going right. We make sure we don't throw all that away because Labour have never left office, never left office with unemployment lower than when they started. That's what people will return to. And the general elections in the summer? I have no idea. For matters, matters completely beyond my control. <laughs> you did a very good job, Kevin Holleray. <laughs> Thank you so very much. much. Thank you. I appreciate it.